Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year, day 231. This is a reading plan you can find on the YouVersion Bible app that endeavors to read through the entire Bible in the year 2020. Now, obviously we're a little past uh, half a year, but it's not too late to join this plan. You can find it on the YouVersion Bible app, and uh, there are scriptures for every single day that you can read from the Old and New Testaments. And it doesn't go in order, but it goes in chronological order, meaning it doesn't go from Genesis to Revelation in order that way, but it follows the historical timeline that these books were written in. So... It's been interesting to follow this reading plan. This has also been a blessing in the sense that if you've never read through the entire Bible, this plan will hold you accountable. And these devotional videos, they're designed to help you meditate on the Word of God, reflect on the Word of God, think about the Word of God, and it's, it's designed to help iron sharpen iron. You can post in the comments anything that comes to your mind, reflections, anything that you receive during your time of reading, things that the Lord might have spoken to you. Feel free to interact. This is supposed to be a community of believers where we can all be enriched by the power of God's Word. If this is your first time joining us, I want to get you to make a commitment to the Word of God. Make a commitment to read the Bible. Make a commitment to set time aside to get into the Word. Even if it's not with this reading plan, make a commitment to get into the Bible at one point or another. Sometime during the day, we should all have some time set aside that we can get into the Bible and expose ourselves to the Word of God. We want to be spiritually minded, and the Bible is a great tool to help us achieve that. If you want to, you can follow along with the plan and pick up right where we are with day 231, or you can go back to the beginning, day number one, and work your way through. All of the videos are already available on YouTube, and you can watch them days one through 31, this present video. I want to encourage you, make a commitment, regardless of what you do, let your faith lead you. Now, I have several scriptures here, not a whole lot, but I do have a few scriptures that I want to share with and unpack and just meditate on with you. As is custom for me to do, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. But you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are comfortable with. So let's go to the book of Psalms, and we are at Psalm 100. Today, we are officially two-thirds of the way through the book of Psalms. Or I should say, we've read two-thirds of the books or chapters that the book of Psalms has. And we find ourselves in chapter 100, and I want to look at verse number 5. The Bible says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. I want to focus on that last part. His truth endureth to all generations. I am so glad that the truth doesn't have an expiration date. My God, what if the truth had an expiration date? What if there was a time that the truth goes bad and turns into a lie and you only had a window or a certain time frame that you can act on that truth before the truth turns bad or before the truth expires? Isn't it a good thing that the truth of God endures to every generation? That means if it was true a hundred years ago, it's true today. That means if it's true today, it'll be true tomorrow. That means time doesn't write wrinkles or or time doesn't take away the credibility of God's Word. Time doesn't disintegrate the truths of the Bible. 
They're true all ways. They were true in the beginning. They were true 5,000 years ago. They were true 4,000 years ago. They remain true 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. They're true today. They'll be true tomorrow. These truths of God will endure to all generations. Isn't it a shame that we're seeing so much deception? What once was bad, the Bible has made clear judgments on. Now, men and women are calling it good. They're taking things and they're changing the meaning of them. And they're trying to pervert the truth. Now, it has become acceptable to live in opposition to the Word of God. And they're trying to make it right politically right and acceptable to live lifestyles that are incongruent with what the Bible teaches. But it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the governor says. It doesn't matter what the king says. It, if, it, if it violates the Bible, then it's not true. The truth of God's word will not expire. It's the truth yesterday, it's the truth today and it will be the truth for all days. And we, as a, as a body of believers, we, we need to be careful to hold on to the truth. We need to be careful to make sure that we don't let it go. We got to teach our children. Don't let your children be taught by the school system and you have no input in their education. I think that we ought to monitor what our kids are being taught. Now, obviously, I don't have any kids, and that, that is a whole lot easier said than it's done, I imagine. But we got to do the best that we can. They're telling our kids that the earth is billions of years old. The Bible says, the Bible implies that it is thousands of years old, 6,000 years or so in that area. The world wants to say that dinosaurs existed billions of years ago. The Bible teaches us that all things were created during the creation time. God made all things that were made within that first seven days. And there was not a time before then that the Bible talks about. It's called, excuse me, it's called the beginning for a reason. That's where everything began. That's where time began. There was no time before then or else this wouldn't have been the beginning. And if there was a time before then, the Bible would have specified it because the Bible talks about this earth and then it talks about a new earth. Well, if there's a second heaven and a second earth, the implication is very clear that there is a first earth. And if this is the first earth, that means there was no earth before this one. There are a lot of erroneous teachings out there that just totally contradict what the Bible clearly states. A lot of error. But thank God that the truth endures to all generations. So if you want to know the truth, it's out there. If you want to know the truth, it's available. The truth doesn't expire. The truth didn't die out. The truth didn't go bad and start rotting away. No, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle of God's word is going to pass away, but the entire word of God stands. And we can count on that. The truth that was true yesterday is the same truth that's true today and right now. And it'll be true for all eternity. Glory be to God. Let us love the truth. We need to love the truth and obey it. There are consequences for not loving the truth. When we get presented with a matter, the question that we need to ask is, is this true or is it not? So we should investigate. His truth endureth to all generations. There are people that claim that they have a truth. Some say, well, that's my truth. That's your truth. Well, if it ain't his truth, it doesn't matter. Your truth better be his truth. My truth better be his truth. 
And I want to love the truth with all my heart. I don't want nothing in my heart wavering. I don't want to I don't want to compromise the truth. I want to embrace it as it is, whether it blesses or whether it blisters. Let the truth live. And God let the truth be made manifest to us. Do we have any truth seekers? that are doing this. Are you seeking the truth? Forget about what you heard. Forget about what you were taught as a child. Do you care more about the truth than your tradition that you would embrace it and seek it and search it out even if it contradicts what you were raised up with? What if the truth conflicts with your tradition? Can you embrace the truth? Can you embrace the change? Can you embrace the transition that the truth would demand? Do we really, really, really love the truth? Do we realize that a lot of times we claim to love the truth and we really don't? Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way and the life. If Jesus is the truth, and we say that we love Jesus, but we're not willing to investigate the truth, where does that leave us? I don't want to have a form of godliness and deny the power. And there is power in the truth. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Glory be to God that his truth endures to all generations. Let's be lovers of the truth. I want to slide into the New Testament and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and beginning with verse number 1. The Bible says this, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. This entire chapter is about love. It's not really about speaking in tongues, although we do get some insights concerning the subject of tongues. And in this particular verse, we see that there are different kinds of tongues. There are the tongues of men and of angels, tongues, plural, more than one. Tongues of men and of angels, different kinds of tongues. This is clearly established in the Bible here. Sliding on to the love verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, verse 4 through 8. Oh, praise Jesus. I did a boo-boo. Let me look it up here. Is it for? Yeah. All right, check this out. Charity suffereth long. This is talking about love. This describes love. What is love? What's the nature of love? What does love do? What should I expect from love? If I love, how should I expect to conduct myself? What are behaviorisms or mannerisms that exemplify the character trait of love? How do I know that I have love? Well, here are some clear-cut concepts that the Bible tells us. Let's read. Charity suffers long. Love is long-suffering. That means if somebody's getting on your nerves, you don't spaz out on them within the first one or two minutes of them getting on your nerves. Charity suffers long and is kind. Love is kind. If love is kind, love is not cruel. Charity envieth not. Love doesn't envy. 
Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Love is not easily provoked. Oh God. This, this makes me want to fast because sometimes I'm easily provoked. I do a good job of hiding it and not expressing it and, and trying to deal with it there. I put the brakes on and keep the muzzle on it. Glory be to God. But the Bible says that love is not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. Love doesn't think evil. Disqualified. Immediate, I am disqualified. I think evil more than I want to, more than I want you to know. As a man of God, man, I have evil thoughts. Evil thoughts come into my mind. Thoughts that are evil. I want to be free from it and I pray continuously. God set me free. God purify my heart. But Paul said there is no good thing dwells in the flesh. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And the heart is desperately wicked. Love rejoices not in iniquity. When someone's sinning or someone's in iniquity, love doesn't rejoice over that. Love rejoices in the truth. Who? Oh, yes, Lord. Love beareth all things. Love bears all things. Oh my God, help me. I'm so short of the glory. I need God. Love bears all things. I have a hard time bearing some things. And I would even go as far to say that there are some things that I just refuse to bear. Some things I just don't want to deal with. And God checks me. I thank God for checking me because the desire of my heart is to do right. It's to live right. It's to love. It's to showcase the love of God. I want to be a vessel of his love, his power and his glory. And the word of God checks me. Hey, you're missing an opportunity to demonstrate love. Oh, praise God. I got you. Let me do better. Let me change my mind. Let me rearrange my thinking pattern. Let me shift some things. Love believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Your love endures. Reminded me of that song. I will worship Oh, who is it? How does it go? Huh, I forgot. Slips my mind. Oh, I will worship you for who you are. You know that song? I will worship you for who you are. Yeah. I'm going to play that after this video. Bet I be in the spirit. Love endures all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And that is going to happen, but not yet. There are some people, some believers who are confused. They've been lied to, and I don't hold that against them. I mean, if you were taught wrong, you were taught wrong, and you think that you're right, but you're wrong, and my God, he's going to help you through an arduous process, perhaps, of bringing you to the truth. Some people say that, see, tongues aren't anymore. That was for then. Show me where in the Bible it says that right there. Tongues shall cease. Does it say when these tongues shall cease? No. You've just implied a meaning to the scripture that isn't there. If you use this verse to say, see, the Bible says tongues shall cease. Yes, it's true. When Jesus comes back, when we enter into the eternal state, tongues will cease. But we are not quite there yet. There are still prophecies being uttered and going out. And people are still speaking in tongues. 
there are various people, quite a few people from these conferences that we've been doing, the WAVE conference, they have spoken in tongues for the first time. They'll be quick to tell you, hey, I don't know what you say or who told you that mess, but I speak in tongues and I spoke in tongues and tongues have not ceased. It says that knowledge will vanish away. Yeah, one day. Knowledge will vanish away. I wonder what that's going to feel like, actually. But that time has not yet come. Tongues. They shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But not yet. And I want to slide into the song of songs. We have had a tremendous uh, two days in the Song of Solomon's. If you haven't read that, um, go ahead and do the readings. If you're single, pray a lot while you're reading this. Praise God. I wish I could teach it like I want to, but this book is very, very explicit. Very explicit. <laughs> it's not rated PG. You put it that way. Slightly stronger than rated R. Let me just say that. Praise God. But there's a lot of there's a lot of powerful intimate things in here. So let us go there. Song of Solomon, chapter eight. And after this day, we'll be out. Well, you probably already are out of it. I just I'm just catching up with the reading. I mean the the videos and the reading. Praise God. I just. Pray for me, please. Hallelujah. Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6. Set me a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. For kicks and giggles, I desire to look up the word vehement. Hmm. Showing strong feeling, forceful, passionate or intense. The flame is described as being vehement, passionate, fiery, strong feelings. <laughs> you get the drift. Forceful, intense, bursting with power. <sighs> Hallelujah. But I want to touch on this. Love is strong as death. When you're dead, you don't hear anything. When you're dead, you don't see anything. When you're dead, you don't smell anything. You don't taste anything. You don't understand anything. You don't know anything. There's not a praise. There's not a shout. You're a dead man. I can talk to you all you want, but you're not going to respond. You're not going to see. Love is as strong as death. Who can escape it? Wow, when death get a hold of you, who escapes death? Now, I know somebody that escaped death before. His name is Jesus. That's the Lord we serve, the God manifested himself in the Son. Jesus, praise God. He escaped death. But love is strong as death. Sometimes we can be so love struck that we can't hear nothing nobody say. Sister, your girlfriend's tried to warn you. Girl, don't be talking to that dude. Don't be dating him, man. I be seeing him this and blah, blah. I heard this and that. But you in love. And you can't hear what they saying. They warning you, but you can't hear it. Brother, your pastor warned you about that woman and told you don't talk to her. Don't get nothing started with her. Don't stir up love. Don't awaken love. Don't, don't initiate nothing. Don't be caught with that individual alone at night in the dark. Be safe, be careful, but you in love and this the right one. And you can't hear the warning of the preacher. 
You can't hear the warning of the man of God. Love is as strong as death. Would to God that he raised you up out of that. If you are caught in the snares of love, oh, God have mercy. Whew, you're in a tough place. You got some roots that have been dug into their heart and their heart has rooted itself in your heart. And when you uproot something out of the heart, it's painful. May it be swift and may the Lord help you. If you find yourself trapped in that, I want all of you to succeed in your walk with God. I want all of you to get the best that God has for you. And sometimes that requires us to be a little patient. Be not weary in waiting, but worship the Lord because you are worth it. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord also bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. Check the links in the corners. And if you're not a subscriber, click the link with my face on it. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. If this is being a blessing to you, there's lots more to come in Jesus' name. See you all next time. Lord, have mercy. Please have mercy on me. And if I done done somebody wrong,